When you do a clean install, I am shocked at the amount of people that don't copy their app settings or maybe their home folder, or there's a lot of different ways to do this. And I really set out this past week to find the best way. So let's talk about all the different ways you can back up your app settings and restore it in seconds. Because without this, you're going to just in for a world of pain. Unless you just love resetting the same settings in your apps over and over again and wasting days of your time, this video is for you. Now, I'm using a new tool, which is this uh, Chimoy, I think is how it's pronounced. It's a French word, but its program is absolutely amazing. Now, I also want to talk about the other tools people are using, too, and kind of say, hey, this is why I didn't go with that solution. It's not to say those solutions are bad. It's just they had some drawbacks that I didn't personally like. Uh, so if you're interested in this, I have the entire how-to article up at ChrisTitus.com, of course, with just kind of a, a full outline of anything I go over in this video. But let's first go over those, those four things I see other people do. The first, that just tons and tons of videos about copying app settings using GNU Stoy, which, or, or GNU Sto, it, it does these sim links back and forth. So when you're in your home folders, uh, anytime you run into a sim link, which there's a couple in here, like Steam does one, I have one to like a VMRC, keeping track of these kind of stinks and in the stow, how it does it with its folder structure can be a bit cumbersome. So I don't really like this way. It's not a bad way to do it per se. I just found it a bit clunky. The second way is bare Git repos, which is very, very close to the solution I'm showing today. The only thing with bare Git repos is tracking and managing them again, is a bit cumbersome where you're constantly in there and editing things where you'll make mistakes, where this program basically takes how bare Git repos work and then just kind of makes it intuitive. And then the other way to do it, as far as deployment goes and redeploying new systems, there's Ansible and, and using Ansible Git with playbooks. You can do a lot of this stuff, but again, that's pretty complex to maintain. And a lot of people are just not willing to learn Ansible to do that. Uh, so I, I decided to say no, even though Ansible is an excellent solution. And then finally, the last way people back up their app settings is through like their home directory backups. And I got to tell you, a lot of times it just brings in a bunch of bloat or things that I don't need. Maybe I'm switching from like a, a GNOME system to a KDE system or, or back and forth. I don't want to bring all the settings from either one of those desktop environments over. So having the whole home directory, well, nice. I think it just introduces a little too much bloat, in my opinion. But all these solutions are good and viable. It's just I wanted to show you this new solution that I just fell in love with. Now I made a little cheat sheet here, kind of going through here. It looks a little complex uh, here, but I'll blow it up on the screen. There's four stages to this program. Now installing the program is pretty simple. I just throw it in the bin folder in the root directory. So when you go to the install it, I just run these four commands. I switch user to root, go to the root directory, run this shell script to basically toss the, uh, the Chesmoy into the bin folder. And then I exit. So that's the install process, pretty straightforward. But once you get it installed, how are you grabbing stuff? You could do a Chesmoy init and then the full address, which all mine's on dot files in GitHub. So if we come over here and just go Chesmoy help, you can kind of see some things, but let's say you're setting up a whole new directory. You could do like a Chesmoy init, and then the full GitHub. If you wanted to copy all my dot files, you could just type this in and hit enter. And what this does is it would make a whole new directory uh, in the default location of Chesmoy. Now, uh, I've already done this, so I'm not going to run this command. But what it does, if we look at the directory, it, it does create this directory and then syncs it with that GitHub. If it's the first time setting it up, a lot of times I would just recommend you go directly to your GitHub and then from your GitHub, just come up here and just create a new repository and call it dot files and then sync that or initialize it with that repo. And that makes it really simple. It's already synced up to your GitHub. Uh, you could do it through command line. But again, I think this is just easier to kind of mix and mash where it's, where it's needed. Also, what I like to do once it's initialized, come over to GitHub desktop and then just go file, add local repository, choose, and then uh, Chesmoy right here and then just add that repo just like that and what this does is it adds it right into your github desktop to where when you do make changes instead of doing like a git push and all that 
I have two factor and it can be a little cumbersome doing it from command line. One of the few reasons I, I do like to use GitHub desktop. You could also sync this up with VS Code or Codium, whichever you're using. Uh, a lot of different ways because it's just using Git, but that's how I add my repos and do the initial setup. Now, if you're doing on, on a secondary system and this isn't the first time, you wanna do just do an init and then do dash dash apply. With the dash dash apply, what this does it immediately takes everything from your repo and drops it in your home folder and everything's great. It's not using symlinks either. So if we look at this, you can see dot X resources and X Nord X uh, RC, uh, all of the files in our dot config. Obviously this is spelled out, but what this does, instead of making symlinks to here, if we look at our home directory, all it is doing is just copying those files and it's doing full versioning. So it doesn't have the nasty sim links all over the place. So it looks like somebody threw up in your home folder, or if you go into your dot config folder, all these things are the same. Now to add a new folder or, or whatnot, let's, let's see what we have. Uh, let's say I wanted to add Thunar. I would just do a Chesmoy add and Thunar will just grab that entire directory. So all my changes for my file system are now over in Chesmoy. And let's say I wanted to sync that. I could come over to our dot files. Let's just do a little refresh. You can see we're uploading a couple different changes, like I think my re renamer and, and a couple other little Thunar type settings. And I would just say Thunar edition and commit that and then push. So what that did was did a git add, a git commit, and then a git push. All three of this line and basically I just did it through the GUI using GitHub Desktop. So everything right here is done through GitHub Desktop. Uh, so we've done add, we've done git push. What about this Chesmoy merge? What does that mean? Well, the beauty of Simlinks is it's always editing the same file, right? Well, with Chesmoy, you got two different files, but let's say you forget and you're in your home folder and you're like, oh man, you know what? I need to change something in my vimrc file. And let's say we're just changing history to 6,000 right here. And if we do like a Chesmoy edit dot vimrc, and let's say we change this one to be 7,000, let's say. We save that out. So now in our regular directory, it's 6,000. And then on their Chesmoy one, it is 7,000. So which which is it going to do? Let's do a Chesmoy merge vimrc. And you can see, it's like, hey, which one do you want to use? Do you want to use the 6,000 or the 7,000 one? And this is using vimdiff for it. And then we just save those out. So if you do the merge again, there's no differences, everything's blank. So now you know the init process, you've done the full commits and pushes, adding new files, merging files, which is just uses vimdiff, uh, Chesmoy edit, if you wanna edit a file directly in the working directory, remember if you do edit it in the home directory, you'll have to do that merge process. So you'll probably mess up a couple times, I know I have, but usually I get in the habit of just doing Chesmoy edit, for everything for all my edit files, which is kind of nice because that's easy for me to remember when I'm editing like my BSPWM or my polybar. But let's say uh, you've messed things up or the, the settings from Chesmoy or you've done them directly in your working directory and it's not reflecting in your home directory. So if we do a Chesmoy edit and we do like BSPWMRC, uh, with editing this BSPWMRC, if we look at this version, you can see at the bottom, we only have one comment on Synergy S, but I added a second comment. If we look at a edit of Chesmoy edit BSP WMRC. And if we come to the bottom, you can see there's two over here to apply these edits directly to our file. We just do apply. And then if we look at the base file here, you can see it now has the two comments. Uh, really simple to do. Now, for some people, you might be like, I like Stowe better because I only like editing this once. I prefer the Git format, but it just depends on you. Now we've done that. Now let's say we've really changed a bunch of stuff or something in the remote publish, or I go to my other computer after doing a ton of work over here and it's already synced up. What I'd probably want to do is grab directly from that remote publish. So if I come into here again and I just go Jesmoy from any anywhere in the terminal and I just go update, it's gonna pull any any changes if I don't have any unstaged changes. Since I did comment that out, 
you can see I have the vimrc file that I've added and then that. Uh, so we'll go vimrc addition. Let's go ahead and commit that to our state. So our remote repo, we just did a git, add, commit, and push all in one using the GitHub desktop. And we come back to here and we do an update. It's all up to date. And if we do a change over here and then try and update it again, let's see what happens. Let's take out that comment, save that, and then let's do an update. This goes, hey, uh, there's been a change in your uh, RC. The last one failed because vimrc was like supposed to be committed. That was completely a new file unstaged and it didn't want to wipe it out. But now that it's over there, it's fine. But this one just has a minor change. So what do we want to do? And we could get, launch into vim diff with diff, or we could just say, you know what? overwrite just bring in my remote changes and overwrite my current one and now if we look back at our vimrc the double comment's still there even though we just removed it so that's the power of it and that's why i love this so much because even if i'm like really messing around and all of a sudden i just messed up all my dot files well i'll just do an update and then just say overwrite just come back to my last save or i could come into my github go back and say okay what was my last commit and look at my remote commits and then just rewind in time if I want. So you have tons of versioning. You have a ton of different options. So much better than I think a lot of other ways people do it. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And a big shout out to all the people that support me here over on Christize.com and those that hit the join button down below. Thank you guys. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.